very warm welcome to you. I'm Hayley Palmer. It's so good to have you here with me on tonight's show, especially as we are joined by Go West legend Peter Cox. And here is what happened when I caught up with him. Peter, it's great to have you here on the show. Back again. We, we thought we'd get you back for part two. Thanks How very are you? Much. How's I'm it very going? well, thank you. How are you doing? Yeah, really good, thank good. you. What have you been up to? Uh, well, nice. just recovering from COVID. Caught oh, no. up with me finally, yes. Oh. But uh, aside from that, um, we have just recently done some orchestral shows, which I think we're going to talk about in a minute. Yes. Uh, and uh, I'm still working on the material for my forthcoming solo album, which I know we're also going to talk about in we a minute. We are. Lots yeah, to so, talk about today. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, we're going to go into the first song on the show. Uh, we Close Our Eyes, which I believe, am I right in saying it's 37 years old? It is, <laughs> yes. We're currently celebrating, supposedly, our 35th anniversary, but of course because of the Lurgy, we are now two years on yeah. from that. So, yeah, 37 years now. Does it feel real that it's actually 37 years? It's strange, isn't it? It's one of those things where you feel as if the time has flown by, and yet, of course, it's a long journey, 37 years. So, yeah. in fact, writing with Richard, probably mm. closer to 40 years. Wow. So, yeah, it's if you'd said to me in 1985, I'd still be doing this in 37 years' time, I'd have said I thought that was unlikely. <laughs> Well, here you are, and uh, we love this song here on the show. Here it is, and I'll be catching up with Peter on the other side. Now, I want to talk about your new song. Uh, it's called She Wants Magic. Love that. Uh, now, this is produced by John Mitchell and mixed by um, the original Go West producer, Gary Stevenson. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Um, I met John at a Rewind, actually. Ah, John is the, is the singer... Uh, that took over from Francis Dunnery and It Bites. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that band, but and John is also in several other prog acts, and he's a fantastically talented guy. And I've been working with Gary Stevenson now, as you as we discussed earlier, for 37, 40 years, probably closer. Wow. So uh, I've known him a long time. And when I was writing the songs for this new album, including She Wants Magic, I was thinking about the lovely faithful Go West fans that we rely upon to uh, keep us in, in a living. Uh, bless them for still being there and that's kind of the flavour of the production of the songs. Okay, so how do you actually go about writing the song? Because I haven't got a clue. So, uh, In my case, I'd, I start with the music. The lyric is right. always the most challenging thing yeah. uh, because I'm, and of course working on my own as I have been through lockdown, um, I, it, it, I missed being in a room with other people. Certainly the, the famous five, as we called ourselves, that effectively made the first Go West album, with Gary, the keyboard player Dave West, Richard and myself, and an engineer. And what was lovely about that was that when I went to work in the daytime, not every single idea had to come from me. I could sit back and someone else would pitch in. And of course, when you're in your own home studio mm. and it's just you, yeah. uh, it's th the reason why it takes me longer that way is because I've got to get past my own edit, my own yeah. filter. And I'm, I'm quite a harsh self-critic. And, I want, when, and it, of yeah. course, you know, after Nick Kershaw says the same thing, mm. after 40 years, you you want to try to avoid repeating yourself if you can manage to do that. So that's not the answer to your question. Uh, just the music first, hopefully yep. a bit of a melody, hopefully a title. And once the music has moved along and you've got a sketch of where you're going, then try to focus on coming up with a halfway decent lyric. Yes, well, we are going to check out uh, the video uh, to She Wants Magic. Uh, also, you can download and stream this right now, can't you? It's out. Uh, she Wants Magic will be out in the middle of May to stream. Um, That's the one. And uh, I will put the video that you're about to see on my YouTube channel when the single comes out. Love that. Uh, we'll check this out. Here is uh, She Wants Magic. She steals the day Spends it staring out to see a world away from where she knows she ought to be When she needs them She finds it there Sun on her face And sand beneath her feet Time and space Wait. 
That's right, yeah, it's a double headline tour. Wow. Um, we haven't spoken too much yet about what the content what the content of the show is going to be. It might be just two separate sets, Paul and Go West. Uh, I'm not discounting the possibility we might do something together. Oh, you've got to do something together. Well, but, you know, see, Paul is Paul's very particular about his music, a real uh, musicophile, if that's a word, you know, knows his music history, really passionate. So it might be tricky to come up with something that suits us both. I know when we did this similar thing with Nick Kershaw, there was a long negotiation period about right. here are my suggestions and here are those, you know. And, <laughs> Compromising. And yeah, exactly. Very exactly. Yes. I like it. Well, I'm sure everyone at home uh, would love to come and see you guys. Uh, we're going to put details on the screen uh, below because I believe it starts on the 14th of May. Have I That's got that right. right? Yeah, at the Sage in Gateshead and thereafter Liverpool and York okay. and coming down south and yeah it's going to be it's going to be great looking yes. forward to it okay well uh, we look forward to checking out that tour uh, we're going to play some tour footage now for you and I'll be speaking to Peter on the other side of this <laughs> your song Too Far Gone because you wrote this in lockdown didn't you? I did it's the first single from the album yes. Yes and how did that come about what was the inspiration behind that song because it's a great song. Thank you very much uh, it's I always try to write a song from, about a relatable idea that the audience can can identify with and I think everyone at some point in their lives probably when they were younger uh, can remember a time when they were in love with someone uh, that wasn't necessarily aware of them. So it's about the idea of being blissfully obsessed with someone and uh, not yet at the point where you're becoming depressed about it. <laughs> oh, OK. We've all been there. <laughs> and it's got that kind of 80s sound, hasn't that's it? That's what we were aiming for. Yeah. yeah, yeah that's uh, Again, that's um, when Gary and I discussed what the sound of the record should be. We were aiming very definitely. For, and, of course, there are lots of people who are... We seem to be picking up on an 80s sound at the yeah. moment. I think there's a lot of 80s about Dua Lipa's new album, for example. Yeah. So, and Laura Mvula also says that she made her current album from an 80s palette, as she put it. So, yeah, who who better to to paint from an 80s palette than people who were there in the first Yay. place? <laughs> <laughs> we're going to check out the song uh, right now on the show. Enjoy.
talk about your recent tour that you did. Um, I know it came to the London Palladium and it had a live orchestra. That must have been such a great experience and totally different, right? It was an amazing experience and a real education as well because uh, Richard and I had done a brief spot with Opera North at their Leeds Millennium Square um, 80s classical show. But we just did four songs there and we, were, we weren't as involved as we were, for example, in the arrangements for these more recent shows. So, yeah, it was fascinating and people were asking, so, rehearsing with an orchestra must be amazing. Yeah, I was going to well, say that. Did you rehearse like, Well, I was about or? to say, without... The, the, the plain fact is an orchestra is a fantastically expensive <laughs> group of people to work with. So the rehearsal, as such, was on the day before the first show, three hours with wow. the orchestra. Uh, <laughs> no so, pressure. Yeah, well, that's right. Um, but <laughs> actually... The way that the whole thing was structured from my personal point of view was, and particularly since we had our own regular band there playing along, um, I just sang the songs in the way that I would sing mm. at an electric Go West show. Uh, but of course we had the, the glorious South Bank Symphonia behind us, making wow. us sound just that bit more glossy and, and mm. yeah, it was very exciting. And what was the Palladium like? Because that's my favourite venue of all time. Yeah, it was great. Um, you know, that was the third of three shows back to back. And of course, it being London, all the people that you want to impress are going to be at the London show. <laughs> our publishers, our managers, the record label and so on and so on. So obviously, there's a little bit more pressure. You want it to be good. But thankfully, it went pretty smoothly and the footage is on Instagram. I'm sorry I haven't got any I can give you. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's great, but I'm using in-ear monitoring now, um, okay. which which you have to do in an orchestral context because you've got all these live microphones on the violins and you can't have speakers facing back, which would have been the way that I've done it for 35 years. So that's been an adjustment for me. And the downside of that is that I don't get a sense of the audience in the room the way I would have done in a pub rock scenario, for example, mm. where you're, you know, everyone's close up, and so I didn't really get a sense of the audience reaction until I saw someone's camera footage after the show, oh. which thankfully was it was it was great. It was really, really genuinely positive reaction, and uh, that's nice even if you experience it a little bit after the show than right in the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And was it Richard's birthday, did I hear? That's right, Palladium? yes, yes, an excuse for him to drink even more red wine during the <laughs> show I mean, it's got to be done, hasn't it? he normally it? does. It's yes. got to be done. Well, we're going to check out uh, Call Me and I'll be <laughs> We're going to go into our last song, King of Wishful Thinking, which... This is in my favourite movie, Pretty Woman. And I want to know, you've probably been asked this before, but did you meet Julia Roberts? Did meet Julia Roberts very briefly. Um, she was with Kiefer Sutherland. I don't know if you remember that at the time. And uh, she came to Richard and me and said, uh, you guys have a song in my show, which I thought, not being in the film industry, I thought was a, a, a strange thing for her to say. But since I've been assured that that is that's a common terminology um, and so we had a very brief conversation she isn't as tall as you might think isn't she, she? that's what they say I about all about actors five foot ten. It? yeah they're always small they're aren't they what yeah they say. but um but uh, yeah Kiefer was quite keen to take uh Julia away from us so he kind of came and said uh, this way and, <laughs> and off they went uh, and not long after which they broke up, unfortunately, oh. um, and I remember Kiefer Sutherland was presenting Saturday Night Live, which is a huge American mm. TV show, uh, and he came on to do the opening monologue, and he had uh, his wedding suit on, and he said, uh, excuse the tux, but I hadn't had the chance to wear it yet, which I thought was very <laughs> cool. Brilliant. And how did the whole thing come about? Like, how did you get approached to do it? Uh, again, I say this a lot about um, our time in the music industry. It, it can often be about being in the right place at the right mm. time. And we had had a year in the wilderness um, because of our difficult second album. If Richard were here, he would say difficult to sell because that's his current gag. But uh, yeah, so we had, you know, an archetypal difficult second album. Uh, then a year in the wilderness, disagreements with our record label, uh, and we found ourselves rescued by our original A&R man. He flew us out to California to start writing the songs for what became our Indian Summer album. 
The King of Wishful Thinking was one of the first songs we wrote for that album. And it just so happened that at that time, Touchstone Pictures had the movie in production. And they came to EMI America and said, we are looking for a soundtrack for this film. Not songs specifically written for the mm. film, but um, um, a catalogue album, if you will, of all the artists that were on EMI at the time. And obviously, though we were low down in the pecking order, we were one of those artists. But we had a very commercial song and yeah. we kind of got promoted Congrats. up the promotional mm. um, ladder and we found ourselves with a hit single in America, finally. Wow. And you lived out in LA for a little bit, didn't you? I was in LA for five years, like? actually. I loved it, absolutely loved it. And when people say now, what do you miss about it? I mean, it wasn't like I had a showbiz lifestyle or anything. I, I lived in the hills. I had a nice rented house. But ultimately, it's about the long days and the light and the lack of a winter. If, if, My dream. You know, no, that's <laughs> right. Me too. You know, I, I, people, uh, English people out there would say to me, don't you miss the seasons? I'd be like, no. No, no I don't. Yeah, I don't need that coat or that yeah. rain coat. You know, <laughs> I really don't need Let me need just have shorts <laughs> and flip-flops all day long. Yeah. I'm so with you on that. Well, uh, I can only dream about LA, but we are going to remind you all uh, to book tickets for the tour. We're going to put details on the screen below. Also, to check out uh, your new single as well, which Thank is out on much. the what date? Somewhere in the middle of May. That's the one. Uh, so, <laughs> lots coming up. And it's been so good because last time we kind of talked about. Your old stuff, and this time we're talking about your new stuff. So it's thank been you. really good to kind of do part two of the show. Appreciate uh, so it. So thank you so much, Peter. Thank you very much. Yes, Peter Cox, everyone. Huge thank you, Peter Cox. What a show. And thank you to you at home for supporting the show. It really is much appreciated. Thank you. Now, I will see you same time, same place next week. I'm going to leave you with Saturday Night Song of the Week. Hello, my name's Bailey. And my name is Matt. We are Tiggy. And this is our latest release, a song called So Much Wonder. We wrote about seeing the magic of the world through a child's eyes and wanting to protect it. Hope you like it. She's ready for...